Hey there, welcome back to another Daniel Meltzer photography video. Today I'm going to talk about the Canon EOS 500N, which is also known as the new EOS KISS in Japan and EOS Rebel G in North America. You're looking at an all-plastic 35mm single-lens reflex film camera. To be honest, when I got this camera, I didn't quite like it. I just put it in my showcase and left it there. But a few weeks later, I had some time to kill, so I took four AA batteries, inserted them into my Canon battery pack BP-8 and just shot a roll of film. And seriously, it was amazing. I don't even know where to start. Um, first off, I don't have CR123A or DL123A batteries just laying around here, waiting to be used. Being able to work with normal Walkman batteries is really nice. And even with the grip, this camera weighs nothing. 400 grams for the naked body, around 1.1 pound or 17.6 ounces. Another reason to buy this camera, it will work with every single full frame autofocus lens Canon has made in the past few years, and every EF lens that may come. EFS and of course old FD lenses won't fit on this camera, but enough with my experience with this plastic beauty. The Canon New Ears Rebel 500 and Kiss G was produced between September 1996 and April 1999 as part of the EOS system. It's a consumer level camera which replaced the EOS 500 Rebel XS or KISS and was later superseded by the EOS 300, Rebel 2000 or KISS 3. The Rebel G has three AF sensors and AF assist light. It also has a mirror prism viewfinder with 0.7 times magnification and 90% coverage. The ISO range went from 25 to 5000 in DX mode and from 6 to 6400 if you set the ISO manually. The shutter speeds went from 30 seconds up to 2000 of a second plus AB mode, with the flash synchronization at 1 90th of a second. Did I mention the amazing super high speed of 1 frame per second already? The new EOS KISS used to cost 59,000 yen, which would be 470 euro or 520 dollar. So let's have a closer look. There are a few functions that are set by pressing the function button and turning the main dial next to the LCD screen. Red eye mode, the beeper, multiple exposures and AI bracketing. Next to the function button is the focusing point selector button, which allows you to switch between the three AF sensors, a self timer and a film rewind button. On the back we got the partial metering AE lock or FE lock button and his neighbor exposure compensation or aperture button. Pressing this one while turning the main dial will change the aperture if you are in M mode and the exposure compensation in the other modes. The common dial is split into five different zones. Function set zone, creative zone, lock, full auto and programmed image control zone. The function set zone consists of two modes. ISO where you can set the ISO manually which is not needed if your film is DX coded and rewind for mid film rewind. The camera will automatically Rewind once you've finished a roll of film. 
The creative zone consists of five modes. A depth, meaning depth of field exposure. This mode is for obtaining a wide depth of field automatically between a near subject and a far subject. It is effective for large group photos or landscapes. The camera uses the three focusing points that we talked about earlier to detect the nearest and the farthest subject. Manual exposure where you can change every setting. AV, so aperture priority. Why the V? I don't know. In this mode you can set the aperture and the camera will do the rest. TV, shutter speed priority. The same as AV but this time you set the shutter speed. I have no clue why the T, maybe for time, and again, why the V. And P mode, program mode. The camera set will set everything automatically, but by turning the main dial you can scroll through the possible aperture shutter speed combinations and choose one. Next on the wheel is L, which stands for lock, so the camera is off. The little green box is the full auto mode where the camera will set everything and you can't do anything. The last zone is the program control zone, which consists of five modes that I'm not going to describe in detail because they should be self-explaining. Portrait, landscape, close-up, sports and, and night scene. And down here we got the tripod mount and the battery chamber. That's basically it. I hope you liked this video. If you do, leave a comment, upvote this video and subscribe.